everybody, I'm Tabitha and I've read five more books. If you are new to reviews on this channel and you'd like to know what rating scale I use when I am giving a book a rating, you're going to want to find that at the end of this video. So I'm moving it to the end this time. We're trying something new. There are helpful timestamps in the description, one of which is for the rating scale. So if that's what you're looking for, jump to those timestamps to check that out. The next book I read in the month of April is The Gilded Wolves by Roshani Trotsky. Uh, this is a 2019 publication by Wednesday Books. It is a young adult fantasy, let's call it historical fantasy, and it is 388 pages. Your synopsis, it's 1889, and the Order of Babel needs Severin and his friends to complete a mission. He's only willing to help if he can get one thing from it, his true inheritance. So what didn't I like about this one? I wasn't sold on the setting being 1889. Honestly, I kept forgetting it was 1889. The language reads really modern. I kept thinking we were in modern, just a fantasy world, which is why when I said genre, I said fantasy first. It it was a strange choice to put it in 1889, and I'm just not sold on whether or not that worked for this book. But I am holding out hope because there is a second book, so maybe it'll make more sense then. We'll see. Second thing I wasn't crazy about in this one is that it's a little confusing. I think the speed in which this story is told leaves you feeling like you missed something. That may have been intentional. I've seen that work for other authors before. They leave things out of the first book so that in the second book you get flashbacks or that gets filled in and that's really cool. Since I haven't read the second one yet because it's not out yet, I can't say if that's true or not, but I guess we'll find out. For right now, all I can say is it was a little confusing. I felt like I was missing something. Third thing I didn't like that, about this one is that it has info dumps. There are definitely spots where you feel like you have to hang on to your hat because you're gonna about to get three pages full of details that are gonna try and bury you. The last thing I can say I didn't like about this one is we've heard this story before. I don't mind when stories are similar, especially if it's a story I love, but this one felt a little too much like Six of Crows. I love Six of Crows but I needed this one to break out and be a little more different than it was. So what did I like about this one? I do like the characters. I like the characters. I like the way they relate to each other. You guys know I love found family stories and this is that. So I like the way they relate to each other. I like the way they work together and I'm looking forward to see how they mature and change in the sequel. The second thing I liked about this one is that it's packed with puzzles as well as the heist style plans. I like puzzles. I like books that make me solve puzzles. I like when the characters are solving puzzles. I thought that was a fun way to play around with the heist story was to also have the puzzles go with it. Puzzle books have a special place in my heart. So I really like that. Who do I think should read this one? If you're a reader who likes the idea of taking a heist style book and setting it in 1889 in France, Maybe you'll like this one even more than I did. If you liked Six of Crows and you just want more like Six of Crows and you're okay with it being a little similar to that, you're probably going to love this one. My rating, I gave this one three stars. It's a good book and I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes, but I think you're going to have to be in that niche to really love this one. So three stars for The Gilded Wolves by Roshani Chotsky. The next book I read in the month of April was... Dawn's Hill by Karen Lavinga. This is an adult age category mystery thriller. It was published in 2017 by Twisted Tree Press and it is 330 pages. I did receive a paperback copy of this book from the author in exchange for an honest review. Your synopsis. Mackenzie Clare needs a fresh start after the death of her father in a broken relationship. She decides to strike off to Dawn's Hill, the most haunted town in America and her favorite childhood vacation spot. As memories resurface, so does a lost psychic ability to talk to the dead. If Mac can't get a handle on these newfound talents, Dawn's Hill may never be the same. What didn't I like about this one? Well, first of all, I should tell you this is going to be all nitpicky stuff. I loved this book. One thing I can say I didn't like or that you might not like is this book does have a very sad vibe in the beginning. It starts off with Mac 
pretty much restarting her entire life, that's going to give this book a very sad start to it. So if you're um, affected by that or if it bothers you when books have that vibe, just be aware that it starts that way. It doesn't necessarily finish that way. The other thing I can say you might not enjoy is that this book doesn't have a romantic subplot. In my opinion, not every book need one, needs one, and it didn't hurt this book not to have it. But if you think every book needs one, you might feel differently. So what did I like about this one? The first one, this is a big one, is Dawn's Hill is really well written. I don't say that a lot because that's a really vague thing to say. But when you pick up a book that's really well written, you notice the language comes together naturally. You feel like you understand everything that is happening. The flow just cannot be matched. And that is how I felt about this book. Very well written. Second thing I liked about this one is that this book has a solid mystery that is taking the focus. This book never forgets that it's writing a mystery, and that's really cool. It has a lot going for it. We're talking about a book that's packed with ghosts, a woman trying to restart her life in a small town, hidden psychic abilities, and even has a cute cat. But at the end of the day, the mystery is driving this story, and it never forgets that that's what it's supposed to be doing. That, like I said, it doesn't even have a romantic subplot to get in the way. I like that this book let mystery drive the plot. The third thing I liked about this book is that the paranormal stuff is really well written. I've read a lot of paranormal books that take it into kind of a cheesy level. This one doesn't do that. Everything Mac experiences comes across as believable and possible in an amazing way. The last thing I want to mention I liked about this one, and I mention it only for a specific reason, is that I loved this cover. I noticed that there's a different cover on Goodreads. So Goodreads has two different cover options. This is the one that I was sent, and I just prefer it. I love it. The smoky quality is great. It matches with the feel of the story. It's a cool cover. I loved it. Who do I think should read this one? If you are a paranormal fan, you need to be reading this one already. It brings in psychics, mediums, ghosts, and even more in a way that you guys are going to love. If you are a mystery fan, this is packed with clues that you can follow to try to unravel the case. You're going to love this one. If you are a reader who wants to try horror, but you're afraid of it, this is not the scariest book I've ever read. But there are a few scenes that definitely take this one to the horror category. So it would make a great starter book if you want to try horror but like horror light. My rating, I had to give this one five stars. It crosses genres all over the place. It's going to reveal to re appeal to a lot of readers. This one is highly, highly recommended. Five stars for Dawn's Hill by Karen Laringa. All right, watchers, you just heard me give this book five stars. That means if you have a book that you think is similar to this book, please make sure you drop the name of the book and the author down below in the comments because I'll be choosing books based on this one for next month's TBR. This next book had been on my TBR list the longest before this month started. The next book I read for the month of April is The Safest Lies by Megan Miranda. This is a 2016 publication by Crown Books for Young Readers. It is a young adult age category mystery thriller and it is 357 pages. And before this month started, this book had been on my TBR the longest. Your synopsis. Kelsey has lived most of her life in fear, raised to see danger everywhere. Her mother, a former victim of a terrible kidnapping, is a paranoid agoraphobic. Kelsey knows she's supposed to keep a low profile, but when something happens to land her in the newspapers, she'll find out why in a shockingly real way. So what didn't I like about this one? One thing I can say I didn't like about this one is that this is such a silly thing to mention, but the ellipsis is overused. It's a strange thing to mention, and I'm sorry, but I kept seeing it pop up, and I was like, why are we using the ellipsis so much? And it, it's a strange thing to notice, but it did get to me. The second thing I can say I didn't like about this one is it's labeled as young adult. I get it. I get why. And the main character is 17. It should be young adult. But I feel like this book will appeal to mystery thriller fans of any age, like adult mystery thriller fans, if you skip this one just because it's young adult, you are missing out. So I hate that it was labeled as young adult only because I know some people are biased against that. You know, I don't feel that way, but I know some people are and that's just too bad. Third thing I can say I didn't like about this one, 
is the ending. To be clear, I do like the ending. But when compared with the rest of the book, it's almost too dull. It's almost like the rest of the book is a solid 100%. And on that final exam, they got a 97. Still good, but you're like, oh, it's not what I've been doing for the rest of this book. So it was a great ending by itself. It just didn't live up to the rest of the book. So what did I like about this one? The first one is that this book is intense. It is emotional and intense right from that first chapter. I literally read this book in one day, practically in one sitting. I haven't done that in a really long time, but I just couldn't put this one down. I had to know what was happening. I had to keep turning pages. That is the hallmark of a good mystery thriller, and this one delivered big time. Second thing I like about this one is the characters. These characters are exactly who they need to be in order for this story to be told. That is not to say they're perfect. In fact, anything but. It just is that they're perfect for this story. Their imperfections are exactly what they needed to be for this story to turn out the way it did. It makes sense once you read it, I promise. Their imperfections make this story click in a way that was required, which is really cool. The last thing I can say I liked about this one is that the side romance in this story is adorable and it worked and it helped the story feel less. Um, it gave you like calm moments in a really intense roller coaster story. Who do I think should read this one? If you are a mystery thriller fan, and I want to again say whether you read young adult or adult, if you read mystery thriller, you should be reading this book because it is your next adrenaline rush. I also want to say as a comp, it's not a title, but a comp thing. If you liked the movie Panic Room, you will love this book. My rating, I gave this one four stars. This highly thrilling, intense book is going to please mystery thriller fans all the way. So four stars for The Safest Lies by Megan Miranda. This next book had the lowest reader average on Goodreads before this month started. The next book I read in the month of April was Panic by Tom Levine. This was independently published in 2019. It is a young adult age category horror novel and it is 59 pages. Your synopsis. In the middle of the zombie epidemic that was the central focus of Tom's full-length novel, Sick, Laura Fitzgerald becomes trapped in a classroom with a freshman she's never met. Worse, he's been bitten by one of the infected students. With both of their lives on the line, Laura must push aside her panic disorder and find a way to get them both to safety. What didn't I like about this one? Well, the first thing I can say I didn't like is that I wanted more, which is funny because this is a companion novel and I've already read Sick. Normally, if you read a companion novel and you want more, you read the full length. If you've read the full length and you want more, you read the companion. I've read both and I still want more. So I don't know, Tom, keep writing, I guess. The second thing I can say I didn't really like about this one, and it didn't bother me, but it might bother you, is that there's not a lot of character development. You have to remember you're getting into a short novella set in the world of a full-length novel. There's not going to be a lot of time for character development. You sort of have to expect that. I was expecting it going in, so I knew that was coming, but it's kind of like a content warning for you. You're not getting a lot of character development. Um, speaking of content warnings, the third thing I should tell you about, and this is going to serve as a negative but also a content warning, this is a zombie style horror novel. There's going to be blood and gore. Yeah. So what did I like about this one? I loved the ending. I can't, I can't say much more than that, except if you watch this channel, you know what kind of endings I like. I'm a controversial ending kind of person. So if you and I don't like the same kind of endings, you may not feel the same way, but I loved this ending. The next thing I liked about this one, this is like a masterclass study in pacing this book because it doesn't waste any time. It starts fast and it moves faster. You will never be bored. You don't have time to be bored. You will read this entire thing very quickly. The pacing is great. Third thing I can say I liked about this one, I actually liked the horror and the gore in this one. I don't always like zombie style books. In fact, I mentioned that when I first reviewed the full length book Sick in 2018. But in this case, for this book, the horror, the gore stuff, it works. The graphic descriptions of the attacks, they're going to bother you if you're squeamish, but it definitely is going to add to the horror. So who do I think should read this one? I mean, obviously, if you were a fan of Sick by Tom Levine, you should read this one. If you are a young adult horror fan or you're interested in trying young adult horror, get this one. If you are a zombie fan or you want to try zombie, 
get this one. In fact, if you're thinking of dipping your toes into young adult horror or into zombie style books, I'd say you can't go wrong with this one because it's only 59 pages. So it's a great way to find out if you're going to like this genre before you dive into the full length books. My rating, I gave this one four stars. I think it's absolutely perfect for people who are fans of the horror genre and you won't be disappointed. It's not going to appeal to every reader everywhere in the whole world, but it definitely fits that niche of horror enthusiasts. So four stars for Panic by Tom Levine. The next book I read for the month of April, which should make it fifth for this video, 10th for the month, was The Jane Austen Society by Natalie Jenner. This book is coming next month, so in 2020, by St. Martin's Press. It is an adult age category historical fiction novel, and it is 320 pages. I did receive this electronic advanced reader copy from NetGalley and St. Martin's Press in exchange for this honest review. Your synopsis. Just after the Second World War, a group of like-minded readers band together in an attempt to save Jane Austen's legacy. So what didn't I like about this one? First thing I could say I didn't like, hey, look, it happens to traditional authors too, is show versus tell. This one suffers from a lot of telling you what people are feeling or thinking instead of letting you experience it with them. That's unfortunate. In fact, that results in a rather dry book that feels too slow. Second thing I could say I didn't like about this one is that the characters were boring. I wasn't connected to any of them. I didn't feel anything for them. It made the romance subplots fall flat. It kept me from being engaged in the story. It did not help the pacing. It did not help the show versus tell. I just felt like I was dragging through this book. The third thing I can say I didn't like about this one is it rehashes Jane Austen's books a lot. I knew, hello, the title, that I should expect some Jane Austen fangirling. I knew that there would be some focusing on her books, but I didn't expect a constant rehashing and a continuing to revisit those characters over and over again. It was cute once or twice, and then it got old really fast. So what did I like about this one? Because there were some things I liked. There is a small discussion in this book about the way books were published back in the day. That was cool. In fact, it almost made me want to read a nonfiction book about how books were published in the 1800s, because that was really cool. Second thing I liked about this one is the setting. Most of this book is set in Chawton, Hampshire, England in like 1945. The author did a great job of making it feel like you were right there, of describing it. It sounded beautiful. It made me want to jump in a time machine and go back and see it. It just sounded beautiful, and I, I loved the setting. The last thing I can say I liked about this one is it makes attempts at a good theme. So the message, if you're willing to dig for it, could be that anyone can read anything. And I love that message, and I want that message. If you're willing to dig for it, there are characters in this book who are loving Jane Austen's books, even though they're not her typical intended audience. And I feel like you could really pull that message out. So who do I think should read this one? If you are a reader who loves Jane Austen, or if you are a teacher who is currently teaching Jane Austen, I think you might want to read this book and maybe even use chapters of it to have other people, other characters who love Jane Austen as much as you do. This book could be used in a high school classroom as a way of bringing in complementary material to Jane Austen books, if that makes sense. My rating? I gave this one two stars. I reserved that rating for problematic books, and for me this one was problematic. But full disclosure, I am not the biggest Jane Austen fan, and that may have had something to do with it. So two stars for the Jane Austen Society by Natalie Jenner. Okay, that is it for me and the next five books that I read in the month of April. I should tell you that I am currently reading the last two for April, but they'll probably end up in the beginning of May because there's only two left, and I do reviews in fives. Thank you for watching. Drop a comment to let me know you're still here. Hit subscribe, tap that little bell so you know when I'm back. Keep plotting the path to your own dreams, and I will see you next time. Bye. Watchers of this channel will already know this, but I do book reviews every time I've read five books. You should know that I don't read just one specific age category or genre. I'm actually a reader of pretty much anything. So I will make sure to tell you what age category, what genre it is, and more importantly, what kind of readers I think will love the book that I'm reviewing. I do use a five-star rating system to review all my books, so I'd like to take a quick second to tell you about that system. 
Five star ratings are reserved for books that I absolutely love that I think transcend genre. In other words, you might love this one even if you don't normally read the genre it's written in. Four star books, on the other hand, are books that I absolutely love and think are great books, but they're more specific to the genre they are written for. Three star ratings are for books that I think are good books, but they have a really niche audience. You might not love this one even if you normally read this genre. Two star ratings are the ratings I reserve for books that I think are problematic. I do try to explain some of the problems in the what I didn't love section so that you know if it's the kind of thing that would really bother you or not. One star rating on the other hand are reserved for books that I honestly didn't enjoy and can't recommend. They're just not for me.